This is example 362. It's a rotational bar with springs and damper system subjected to a sinusoidal motion. This is a uniform rigid bar of mass M and is pivoted at point O and is supported at the two ends by two springs. At NP, the spring PQ is subjected to a sinusoidal displacement, exir sine of omega t, and we like to find the steady state angular displacement or the bar when the L is one meter, and we saw the total length of the bar is one meter. We have the constants of both springs is 1000 newton over meters. The constant of this damper is 500 newton seconds over meter, and the mass of the bar is 10 kilograms. The displacement x0 is one centimeter, and the frequency of this sinusoidal displacement is 10 radians over second. Let's now do the free body diagram of the bar in a generic position when we have tilted the bar an angle theta. We have the force of the first spring, let's call it FK1. We have the force of the damper and we have the force of the second spring. We have the two forces at the pivot, which will be OX and OY, because it takes two degrees of freedom and that produces two reaction forces. This is my angle theta. The force of the spring is K times the displacement x1. The displacement x1 here is equal to L to fourth times sine of theta. The force of the damper is C times the velocity at the point where the damper is located and the velocity along the damper. Remember that we are assuming that the springs and the dampers stay in the vertical position. So the velocity of that point will be perpendicular to the bar, which is theta dot L fourth, and I have to decompose it in the direction of the damper, so I multiply that by cosine of theta. The force of the other spring will be equal to k times the relative displacement between the two ends of the spring. That gives me that x2, it will be the displacement of that bar, which is 3L fourth sine of theta minus the sinusoidal displacement that I am applying to the other end of the spring. When I add moment respect to point O, all these forces produce moment, but the ones that are reaction force at the pivot. So the force of the first spring will be produce a moment times the distance, and the distance is L over 4 cosine of theta. The moment produced by the force of the damper is the force times L force of cosine of theta, and the moment produced by the other spring will be the force times the distance, which is 3 fourth length cosine of theta. All that is equals to the mass moment of inertia of the bar respect to point O times the angular acceleration. Since we put the bar rotating Clockwise, this angular acceleration is negative. So the equation of motion will be equal to mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration plus the constant of the super is L4 squared cosine of theta squared times the angular velocity plus K times L over 4 squared plus 3 fourth L squared times sine of theta cosine of theta equals 2 k 3 fourth l x squared cosine of theta sine omega theta. This is the non-linear equation of motion of the system. For small angular displacements, 
we recall that sine of theta is almost theta and cosine of theta is equals to 1. So we can simplify our equation by linearizing the values of theta and we get the inertia, the mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration plus c times l squared over 16 times angular velocity because the cosine squared of theta became 1 plus k. We will add l fourth squared plus 3 fourth l squared and that gives us a value of 5 l squared over 8 and that's times theta because sine of theta becomes theta and cosine of theta becomes 1. Independent term will be 3 fourth L k x sine of omega t. There the cosine of theta became 1. This is our linearized equation of motion of our system. The mass moment of inertia respect to point O, we have to calculate it using the parallel axis theory. The mass moment of inertia of the bar respect to the center of mass is 1 12 mass L squared plus the distance from O to the dense center of mass squared times mass. That gives me a value of 7 over 48 mass times length squared and plugging into the values, we get that the mass moment of inertia respect to point O is 1.4583 periodic kilograms meters squared. The gap equivalent is then the term that goes with the angular displacement. In this case, will be k times 5 L squared over 8. Let me plug in the values and we get for that the equivalent constant of spring is equals to 625 and the equivalent constant of the damper is equals to c times l squared over 16 which is the term that goes with the angular velocity. I plug in the values and I get that the Equivalent constant for the damper is equals to 31.25. We can name the amplitude of the displacement in the right side of the equation F0, and that will be 3 over 4 LK X0. And that gives me a value of 7.5. Finally, we can rewrite our equation as the mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration plus the constant of the damper times angular acceleration times constant of the spring times the rotational displacement. And that is equal to F0 times sine of omega t. That's an equation that we know how to solve and we know what is the response of this second order differential equation. If we calculate the natural frequency of the system, that's square root of the constant of the spring divided by the equivalent mass, which is the mass moment of inertia. And if I plug in the values, I get that the natural frequency is 20.7 radius over a second. The damping ratio is defined as the constant of the damper divided by square root of the constant of the spring times the mass. And I use the equivalent values for all these three parameters, and my zeta is equal to 0 0.51. That's an undamped system. The response to the system is equal to theta sub zero, sine of omega t minus phase angle. Remember that this is the steady state response, so because we did not have any initial conditions. So we don't have a homogeneous solution. And the amplitude theta sub zero is F zero divided by the constant of the spring, in this case an equivalent constant of the spring. Therefore, that's 7.5 
divided by 625, the amplification factor, which is 1 minus r squared, quantity squared, plus 2 zeta r squared, sine of omega t minus phi. The r is omega divided by omega n, and omega is 10 radians over second, that's given, divided by our natural frequency. We have a value of r equals 0 0.483, so this value is less than 1. So the system has not gone over the frequency of resonance. With these values, we can calculate then the magnification factor, which is 1.0925. The phase angle, remember, that is the inverse tangent of 2 zeta r divided by 1 r squared, and that gives me a phase angle of 0 0.57 radians. Finally, the response is equals to 0 0.01311 sine of omega t, which is 10 t, minus 0 0.5779, and this is our response. In this graph, we can see the magnification factor, and the solid line that I draw in purple represents our point of operation, which is R equals to 0 0.483. For r equals 1, the magnification factor is 0 0.966. So as you see, in this case, the magnitude at resonance will be even less than the magnitude at 0 0.43 of the natural frequency. Why? Because the damping is very high. The damping is 0 0.5175, and for that amount of damping, the magnification factor does not have a maximum, but is a flat curve and it diminishes after we go from r equals 1. For r equals 1, we have the magnitude of 0 0.01159, which is less than the one we find for r equals 0 0.483. And remember that the phase angle when we are in r equals 1 is pi half.